Hi guys, Jordan here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you a really quick way to get your Luminef painted using mostly Citadel contrast paints. This method is a really fun, quick way to get you up to tabletop standard really quickly. The Luminef were some of my favorite models of 2020. I was really excited when they got announced. They still retain a bit of the old high up aesthetic, but with a bunch of new design aspects thrown in there. To start with, we have a 50-50 mix of contrast medium and skeleton horde mixed together to make a nice warm white. I mean, obviously the paint's not white, but when you put it on a white surface, it gives you a warm fabric-y look rather than a cold, silky look. I'm gonna do this all over the bits that I wanna keep white, including the armor. You can be pretty heavy-handed with this paint. It's pretty forgiving. If you do notice it pooling in any areas a little bit too much, you can use the brush just to drag it around. The reason we use the contrast medium to thin it down is because it, it thins it, but it doesn't spread the pigment like it would if you were using water to thin it. And also doesn't leave watermarks or anything like that. Just makes it nice and easy to move around. Basically just keeps the characteristic of the paint, but thins it for you. The contrast medium is a really handy tool to have in your painting arsenal. It basically lets you create your own contrast paints. The ratio in which you mix the acrylic with the contrast medium will vary brand to brand, but you know it just takes a bit of experimenting and playing with different ideas to yeah, find a nice color that you want, and that, that color will be yours as well, which is pretty cool. If you are mixing your own paints, as always, it's a good idea to keep a little note for yourself so you can remember the ratio. Just so if you want to keep a bit of coherency among your army, you know, it's easy to recreate that color pretty much exactly the way you did it before. Although most times it doesn't turn out exactly, but it'll be close enough. The appearance of the contrast paint will look different over different base coats as well. So for example, this is the white, so you'll see how this looks, but you can also, if you're using like a beige or off-white undercoat, it will give you a slightly different result, which is pretty cool. It's pretty fun to experiment with. I've tried a few different ways of doing it. I find white's the best because it gives you the, the best representation of the color in my opinion. But yeah, have a play with it, see what you can come up with. Do the same for the shield. Just be careful of the, the straight edges on the runes can sort of catch the paint a little bit and make it look a bit uneven. So just use the brush to make it look nice and even around those straight edges. You could do the edge of this shield gold. That would look pretty cool. Maybe on like your sergeants or something like that. For the skin, I'm gonna use Gillum and Flesh, which is another contrast paint. Um, this <laughs> makes it really, really quick and easy to do skin. Oh yeah, you pretty much do one coat over white and it looks awesome. You can still highlight it if you want, but um, I find inside these helmets, it's a bit of a pain in the bum to <laughs> try and highlight, so I just like to leave it as it is. I couldn't decide whether this model was wearing gloves or not, or whether it had bare hands, so as soon as I had the paint out, I decided to go with bare hands, but I think it looked just as good with some leather gloves on. For my feature color, I chose pink. I wanted to use these models as a bit of an opportunity to try something new, seeing as there were a new line of models and whatnot. And the inspiration for this sort of came from cherry blossom trees, or Asian cherry blossom trees. This color I made up of about a three to one mix of contrast medium and pink horror mixed together. There is a pink available, but I just haven't picked it up yet. I'll, if anyone's used it, let me know how it is and I might use that for my next run. So I'm gonna coat this over the central part of the robe, the crest and all the little tassels that hang off the spear and the back of his sword. Again, this is contrast paint, so it's pretty forgiving. Just try and be a little bit careful when you reach the edge of where it meets the white bit of the robe and also around that little chainmail bit around the center. Just nice and gently in there. The design of the armor just kind of reminds me of these ancient Asian cultures, the Chinese in particular, I guess, but a little bit of Indian and Tibetan as well. 
There seems to be a lot of different sources of inspiration thrown in together for the design of these Lumineth models, but that's good. I quite like it, all of the range so far. Although I'm not sold on the flying fox thing. On the crest, I'm going to thin it a little bit more with just a bit of extra contrast medium, just so I can build up a, a little gradient. For this one in particular, I'm going to try and do a darker streak through the center of the plume. I added a little bit more of the pink horror to this mix for doing these details on top of the shield just because I was a bit worried it was going to flow down into those little gaps. Then I'm just going to add a little bit of white to the mix just to do a little highlight on the top of the rune on the shield. Now for everyone's favorite metallic color, Vallejo metal color. This one is exhaust manifold. I'm gonna use this to do all the little chain mail bits, or scale mail, I guess you'd call it. These Vallejo metal color paints are ridiculously easy to use. They come really thin already and they just fly over the model so easily. And most of the time you only need one coat. You can do two if you want, but honestly you can get away with just one. One thing to take note of with this paint is that it actually contains aluminium in the pigment. So it will damage your brushes if you don't clean them properly afterwards. And also your airbrush, it can actually rust in there. That's happened to me before. I thought I cleaned it all. I left a tiny little bit in the cap overnight and came back in the morning and it had a bit of orange rust in it, which was nice. When I do any metallics on models, I try and do them in a batch together. That way I know I've got clean water and clean brushes. If you don't clean your water after you've used metallics, you'll get bits of glitter in your, or in all of your paints, which in some cases might be pretty cool, but uh, usually you don't want that. And just do the same on the scaled part on the bottom of the shield. Now Retributor Armor is my workhorse gold for pretty much most of my models. It's just um, just pretty reliable. I've, I'm a bit picky with my golds. I've been through a lot of different brands. My favorite one is actually a, a Vallejo one. This is an alcohol based one, but it's just a bit of a pain in the ass to use because I have to get different cleaners and all that stuff out. But so for most of the time I use Retributor Armor, which is a double pigment paint from Citadel. Use this to coat all the ornate parts of the armor including the scabbard as well. These areas are bits like the base underneath the crest and also he has a little charm on his waist, I think so you'd call it, I don't know what it is. A little dangly thing on his waist, but paint that gold as well. And while I'm here, I'm gonna base the, all the little gems in the crest because I'm gonna come back later and put a, a red glaze paint over the top of it. I'm just gonna block in the gems with gold on the shield. I'm gonna do the same thing later. I've got a, it's a paint called Spirit Stone Red which goes over the gold and it gives you like a really quick gem effect. Now the metallics are out of the way, I'm just gonna edge highlight the armor with just a basic white. You can use any white for this. I just like these Vallejo ones because they come in the dropper bottles. This makes it a bit more accessible. Some of the Citadel pots are a bit annoying sometimes, but I do like their color range. They make up for it. The reason I'm doing this at this stage is because any parts where the pink has maybe bled onto the white or the gold has bled onto the white, I can now cover up with the white. This is the most time consuming part of most models, but it's usually the most rewarding part. Even if like me, you don't have a very steady hand you can still make your models look 10 times better when you just put a little bit of highlighting on there. Especially this one with the stark white against the warm white, it looks uh, nice and poppy. All right, now with all the white highlighted, I'm gonna move on to the brown parts. This includes leather and wood. I'm gonna be lazy and use the same paint for leather and wood. Some people would use different ones, but I don't feel like doing that today. So I'm just gonna use this contrast wild wood and I'm gonna start with the boots. 
The spares on this model are pretty painful to work with. They are very flexible and you do get worried about snapping them. I've seen a few people snap them while painting them. I don't know how hard they're pushing on it, but still when you're trying to get a paint on there and you have to apply a little bit of pressure, they do flex with it and it's annoying. That's where the contrast paints do help a bit because you can be pretty light with them. You can load your brush up, slop it on and it will still look great. Now I'm going to wash all the silver parts in Drakenhof Nightshade. This gives just a nice little blue tint which I quite like on my metallics occasionally. You can use known oil to make it black but I just wanted a little bit more colour in these models so I'm going to go with a blue wash. Blue steel if you wish. Once that's dry I'm going to pick out all the scales again with Vallejo Metal Colour Dura Aluminium. I think this is the brightest one in this range and it's really good for making the metals look really shiny, especially when you just pick out little parts selectively. I'm also going to coat the spearhead in this because I'm going to put another paint over the top which is like a colour shift paint and this just gives it a nice base for the metallic to shine through underneath. And do the same for the scales on the shield, this will just make it pop. For the blue parts, I'm going to make another contrast paint using Calador Sky and Contrast Medium in the same ratio of 3 to 1. And the only part I'm going to use this paint that I mix especially for is this little tassel on the back of the sword. And now I'm going to wash all the gold parts with Reichland Flesh Shade. This is a, a more redder brown and this gives you a nice warm gold. And this is the last step before we highlight the gold as well. And this is one of my favorite parts and that's highlighting the gold. And this is one of my go-to gold highlighting paints which is Liberator Gold, which is one of the double pigment Citadel metallic colors. Just go ahead and pick out all the hard edges and areas where you think light will reflect. Like on these sort of softer edges as well, sort of bring them out a little bit with the lighter gold. It'll just make it look like there's a bit of light hitting them, make them look a bit more luxurious as well. And try and be a bit careful around these bits where it touches the other colors as well, because gold's a bit of an annoying color to paint over, especially when you're using contrast paints. That is probably the one problem that I do have with contrast paints is that if you are basing everything in contrast paints and using metallics or say another normal acrylic paint, if you go onto that surface it's pretty hard to cover it up with the exact same color unless you do a bit of white first and then go over the color with the contrast paint. And don't forget to pick out the little gems on the shield as well because once we put that um, thick red transparent paint over the top this highlight will show through pretty subtly but it will make a nice little difference. This is the Spirit Stone Red. It's a Citadel technical paint. It's basically like a, a really high gloss transparent red. So if you put it over something shiny it's going to look shiny. If you put it over something dull it'll look dull and you uh, probably defeats the purpose of it. The whole idea of these paints was to do uh, quick, easy gemstones. So say if you're doing Blood Angels or um, one of these models, Eldar, I've got a lot of gems on them. It sort of speeds up that process for you so you don't have to highlight gems from scratch. I'll show you a video one day of me doing my gemstones the traditional way, which is pretty cool. But if you have a lot of them to do like this, it's a bit of a pain in the bum. And it's hard to get off your skin, this paint and do the gemstones on the crest the same way. Use an older brush for this as well because it doesn't really come off that well or not as easy as acrylic paints anyway. 
Now this is an exciting paint. This is Green Stuff World's Psychotic Illusions from their Color Shift Metal range. There's a few different color combos in this. Uh, these are sun metal weapons, so the, the best one to use are probably the orange to red color shift, which is a really cool looking paint. I've seen a few people on Instagram do that. But this one, I wanted to try and replicate the, the swirly magical bits that are on the front cover of the Lumineth book. And this was sort of the closest uh, I thought looked on the bottle, but it didn't come out the same color, but the pink in there actually ties in pretty well with the other color that we've got. So, you know, happy mistakes. Now the model's pretty much done, so now let's do the base. For the base, I'm gonna paint the edge in Mournfang Brown. This is a slightly lighter one. You can use Gorthor if you want, but I quite like this one. This sort of stands out a bit better. Um, I used to do black bases on all my models, but it turns out brown or gr even gray bases look a lot better when they're on the tabletop. The black looks a bit artificial when it's on the tabletop, which I know sounds a bit stupid because it's a little toy soldier, but these sorts of things matter to people like me. So when you've got a nice coat on there, um, wait for it to dry and then we're going to use one of the Citadel texture paints which are also a nice time saving uh, tool. This one in particular is called Sterling Mud and I'm going to apply it with the little scraper. And I'm also going to mix in a little bit of this Agrilan Earth which is a crackle medium. The Sterling Mud is basically paint and grit mixed together to give a texture and the Agrilan Earth has is paint and a crackle medium. And what that means is when it dries, it'll crack like it'll look like dried earth. And you can use this effect for doing things like ice or molten rock and things like that. It's actually pretty cool to just have that crackle medium on its own. I think Vallejo make one. Um, I'm sure there's other brands that make them as well, but yeah, it's, it's pretty fun paint to experiment with. Basically just get a nice even coat with the Sterling mud on the model. And then we're gonna move on to the Agrilan earth. And with this, I'll just do sporadic little spots and then try and mix it in with the brown so the color difference isn't so stark. This takes a while to dry, but once it's dried, give it a nice wash with Agrax Earthshade and this will sort of bring those colors together. Once that's dry, we're gonna give it a quick little dry brush with Bane Blade Brown. Now you want to wait for this to dry because if you don't, it's just going to look like a mess. I'll do a separate video on dry brushing, but for now, it's pretty simple. You just put a, a little dab of paint on your dry brush, use a bit of paper towel to get the, most of the paint off and work into the bristles, and then just move it backwards and forwards so it catches the raised areas on the model. This is a really quick way of highlighting because it almost naturally captures where light would be grabbing anyway. Now I use my trusty grass tufts. You can make your own ones of these pretty easily, but these are pretty cheap. I think these are the army painter ones. Just do a few little test runs with your model before gluing it, just so you can see where to put the tufts. They're usually pretty hard to put on after you put the model on, so I'm just gonna play around a bit and try and find a nice little spot for them. Usually I would use PVA glue for something like this, but for now I'm using super glue just because I wanted to get this model done nice and quickly. Now, this is a really fun snow texture from Vallejo. I said that I'll do one of these as well. I think it's called Valhalla and Blizzard or something like that. But basically you just splodge this on in little bits. This time I'm gonna try and use a dry brush to, to put this on. Usually I use the little sculpting tool, but I'm gonna try something new with this because I want it to try and stick in the grass and make it look like, make it look like the snow's falling. Make sure you go easy with this stuff. A lot goes a long way. You don't want a massive snow drift because it's gonna make your all the other basing stuff you did pretty pointless if you covered all up with snow. So like I'm doing now, just little dabs here and there. Actually, it's pretty much all over the model, but still little dabs, a little bit in the grass. The few, the odd little, you know, part where it's collected. And remember, nature's pretty random, so try not to make your bases look too uniformed. I think they'll make them look a little bit more realistic. I know nature's also extremely complex, so, you know, not everyone understands exactly where snow would fall or, you know, those kinds of aspects of making bases. You don't have to go too over the top with the realism. I 
can't remember where I got this stuff, but it's basically like a little pink powder and it comes out like little cherry blossom petals, which I wanted scattered around the base. And now just a little touch up around the rim with the same brown just to tidy it all up and we're pretty much done. The last stage is to glue the model onto the base. And that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you learned something new. And if you liked our videos, please like and subscribe and click the little bell in the corner if you want regular notifications for when a new video comes out. Thank you and good night.